name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please do be seated. A warm welcome. It's lovely to be with you today. I'm Dave Middlebrook and I'm Archdeacon of Bedford. So I'm here with a sort of sub on the back because Anne's away. So lovely to be with you. Join you in worship. If you want to chat afterwards, please do, uh, please do stay behind. It would be lovely to have a chat afterwards. And also welcome to those who are gathering online as well. I trust you're able to participate in the service fully. Thank you to those wearing masks. We ask if you come up for communion, please keep your face covering on the rest of the time. It's a choice is yours. I will wear mine while singing and I'll take it off when I'm doing all the talky bits in between. But it's great to be with you today and to join you in worship. Please stand if you are able. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of God's love revealed in word and sacrament, let us call to mind our sins. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The power is yours but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As forgiven people, we can join with the angels in heaven in the words of the Gloria. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name, and the good of your church and people. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please to be seated now for our first reading, which Akasoa is kindly going to read to us. Thank you. First reading is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verses 1 to 16. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Besides the gate, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out. To you, O people, I call. And my cry is to all that live. O simple ones, learn prudence, acquire intelligence, you who lack it. Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips, will come what is right, for my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is not an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to one who understands and write to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction instead of silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, plead with prudence, and I attain knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. I have good advice and sound wisdom. I have insight. I have strength. By me, kings reign, and rulers decree what is just. By me, rulers rule, and nobles, all who govern rightly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand for your able for our gospel reading. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. It's a reading from Luke chapter 22, verses 24 to 30. A dispute also arose among the twelve as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table, but I am among you as the one who serves? You are those who stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we remain standing a moment of prayer, 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the encouragement it brings, for the challenge it brings. Lord, as we reflect upon it now, may you guide us and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. <clears throat> as many of you may know, 70 years ago today, on the 6th of February, 1952, a young Princess Elizabeth, aged 25, became queen. 70 years. Wow. Of course, she became queen on the death of her father, George VI, although she wasn't crowned until 1953. And for 70 years, the queen has committed herself to the service of this nation, to seek the best that she can for this nation. And I think she's been an example to us all. Whether you're a royalist or not, you must admire the queen. Many consider her the greatest monarch that we've ever had in this nation, and certainly she's the longest serving monarch. And later this year, we'll celebrate the Platinum Jubilee, and we all get an extra bank holiday as well. We get that thrown in, so that's a, something to celebrate as well. So the Queen, monarch, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother. She's the most photographed person in the planet. Now aged 95, over 95, she still has many engagements each week. She's the supreme governor of the Church of England, and she feeds her own dogs as well. She entertains world rulers, and until fairly recently maintained her own Land Rover on Balmoral Estate. A quite remarkable lady, remarkable majesty, who served this nation and the Commonwealth for all these years. In a Christmas address in 2002, this is what Queen Elizabeth said. I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try and do what is right, to take the long view, to give my best in all that it brings each day, and to put my trust in God. I draw my strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. In her Christmas address 2012, she said this, God sent his only son to serve, not to be served. He restored love and service to the center of our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. The Queen has been very public on many occasions about her faith and how her faith sustains her and maintains her and grounds her as well. And she often refers to it during her Christmas address. And actually six months before her coronation, she asked the people of the Commonwealth to pray that God may give me the wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making, that I may faithfully serve him and you all my days. I think God answered that prayer, in my opinion. So I find it interesting, in our reading today, our gospel reading, we get Jesus saying this, the kings, doesn't say queens, the kings, the Gentiles, lord it over them. But you are not to be like that. He said, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, the one who rules like the one who serves. I'm sure Her Majesty feels that sometimes she gets it wrong. Doesn't always get it right. But I think she certainly devoted herself to serving the people of this nation. And often when we think of people in authority, in power, we think of a, you know, that state of superiority, that position of power. That someone with great knowledge or great influence, some with great natural ability often as well. I think in a majesty we see some of those attributes, but I think we also see that servant heart, the servant queen. The, heavy, the former heavyweight uh, boxing champion Muhammad Ali was not known for his, uh, for his sort of a not sort of backwards in coming forwards. And he often said, I'm the greatest. And apparently there's one story, he was on an aeroplane, and the uh, air steward came around and said, you know, please, Mr. Ali, do up your seatbelt, to which he said, Superman don't need no seatbelt, to which the reply was, Superman don't need no plane, do your seatbelt up. <laughs> no one would mistake Muhammad Ali's uh, sort of bragging as a Christian virtue. But sometimes people in authority and people of influence may be sort of a, over-egg themselves a little bit. In our reading today, for who is greater, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? It's not the one who's at the table. But I 
Jesus said, I'm among you as the one who serves. Jesus again and again says he's the one who's come to serve and asks us to follow that model. He demonstrates it again and again. And it seems incredible to me. The disciples just don't get it. And here again, we have disciples squabbling over who is the greatest. And especially when you consider what the setting is, this setting is the Last Supper. In the other Gospels, this is where Jesus washes the disciples' feet, that supreme example of being a servant. They've just shared the, the Passover meal, that important meal, when they remember God's goodness to them. And of course, that night had an extra special meaning. Jesus just announced that someone's going to betray him, one of the twelve, and they get in an argument about who's the greatest. I'm sure it went something like, well, it's not going to be me who betrays Jesus. Well, it's not going to be me because I'm better than you. No, you're not better than me. And you can see how it happened. It's human nature to some extent. And of course, this wasn't the first time the disciples had the same argument, the same silly discussion. We know they were, they were walking along the road, it tells us, in Mark 9, and uh, they thought Jesus was out of earshot, and they were having an argument who was the greatest. And Jesus used that example to speak about childlike humility. Another occasion, the mother of James and John came and said, could her son sit either side of Jesus in heaven? And of course, the other disciples were indignant about such a suggestion. And that's where Jesus taught them again about servanthood. So in spite of these repeated lessons, they haven't got it. And we hear that in the reading today. But I think before we get too indignant and too cross with the disciples, I think we should ask about ourselves for a moment. Even if we don't verbalize it, sometimes we think we're better than other people. When someone makes us cross or angry, when someone does something that really annoys us, we go, typical of them, isn't it? <laughs> Done it again. I'm not like that. I'm better than that. Or when we see something in the news, something in politics maybe, I'm not going to go any further than that. We have a debate. Oh dear, oh dear. Shocking. Then we need to look at ourselves. Jesus asks us to be those who serve, not to put ourselves above others. And sometimes in our mindset, we can't get that servant heart. Because it says we want to offer all of ourselves to God, every single part of the day. It may be that we need to speak to someone about Jesus. Maybe we need to offer cheerful help, even if he puts us out a little bit. Maybe we just need to spend time with someone, listening to them and offering some sympathy. Whatever our job, our daily attitude should be, Lord, here I am, use me, be your servant. And I talk to myself as much as I talk to you. In our text, we have a couple of prime lessons when we look at Jesus about servanthood. That great example of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've ever been outside, not in a town, but in the country. You look up and there's stars and stars in heaven. You go, wow. We can't even count the number of stars. And that's not all, that's not all the planets and the stars in the universe. We know that God made that. But God then chose to come to earth as a human in Jesus Christ. He humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on the cross, Philippians 2 tells us. What an example of someone who came down from the majesty of heaven, from the rule of the universe, to give everything. We read in our, we read in our reading about how Jesus says, you stood by me in trials and temptations, he says to the disciples. First glance, we think, well, just a minute, what, didn't they all run away? Didn't they all run away when the crucifixion came? Didn't they all hide when he was arrested in the garden? But this says, actually, they stood beside him. It wasn't all plain sailing for Jesus through his earthly ministry. People shouted abuse at him. The authorities had a go at him, and the disciples stood with him. But despite that, he went on to fulfill God's calling on his life, his father's calling. Of course, he was often lonely, often misunderstood, because he said things that were hard, things that were difficult. Example for us, that sometimes we have to say things that are a little bit difficult for people to hear, won't always make us popular. And of course, he showed that ultimate sacrifice of love. Now, we're not probably going to be asked to do that. But he submitted himself to God's plan, his father's plan. 
The Apostle Paul was driven by that same love that he saw in Christ. He says, absolutely nothing shall ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What an amazing example we have of someone who offered that servant heart and servant nature. And the other lesson we get from this, from this reading, I think, is about, is about the danger of self in destroying servanthood. The disciples squabbled about self. That's why earlier on it says, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. That's what Jesus says earlier in Luke's gospel. And that's a daily exercise that we have to do because we're all human. And human is about self-preservation. I love that wonderful hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And it says, Pour contempt on all our pride. Our Western culture is one about putting ourselves first. That's how we get good grades in exams. That's how we get a place at college, if you want to get one. That's how we get promotion at work. That's how we get ahead in, in business or in commerce. That's what businesses do. They compete with one another. That's what sports teams do. That's how they win championships. So all of the world says we compete, push ourselves first. But Jesus says, not so with you. Worldly leadership is not a model that Jesus asks us to follow. So in our gospel reading today, it's quite a challenge. We see the disciples doing what a very human thing is, to saying, I'm better than you. Who is the greatest? Is it me? Is what they're asking themselves. Maybe we all do that to some extent in our minds. But Jesus, the greatest of all, gives us that model, asking us to model ourselves on him, give up everything in heaven. He came, he went through trials for us, went through death for us, and gave everything for us. And he warns us that we can easily get distracted. We can easily get led astray by that very human nature of ours. And we have to offer ourselves daily to God. And today we give thanks for 70 years of the reign of Queen Elizabeth II, the servant queen. And she's tried to model herself on Christ. And no doubt she'll say she got it wrong far more often than she's got it right. To coronation, the king or the queen is given some symbols. One of those symbols is a sword. It's called the sword of mercy. It's actually a sword that's had the tip cut off. So it's a blunt sword, if you like. This is to remind monarchs that they are crowned. That they can exercise great power and judgment. But they should also practice mercy. And the queen says about this sword, this is in line with the character of God. As the prophet Micah puts it in the Bible, what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. A very young princess, Elizabeth, on her 21st birthday, did a radio address to all the people of the Commonwealth. And she said this, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we belong. But I shall not have the strength to carry out these, this resolution alone unless you join in it with me. And so now I invite you to do. I know that your support shall be unfailingly given. God help me to make good my vow and God bless all of you who are willing to share it. May we too seek that servant heart. In the words of our reason today, the kings and queens of the Gentiles lord it over them. But you are not to be like that. You said the greatest among you should be like the youngest. The one who rules like the one who serves. So pondering how we might truly come to an attitude of having a servant heart in the example of Christ, I invite us now to stand together 
and declare our faith in our loving and almighty God, the one who gives us the strength to do these things. Please stand if you are able. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and, and earth, of all that, that is seen and, and unseen. We, we believe, believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, from true God begotten not made, of one, one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated now for our prayers of intercession, which Carol is going to lead us in. Thank you, Carol. Let us pray for the church and the world and thank God for his goodness. Father God, thank you for your abundant love for us. We bring before you our world, your worldwide church, all denominations from all places, and we pray for unity and healing. We pray that divisions may be healed and that where there are difficulties, we can learn to disagree well. Help your church to be a beacon of hope, peace and justice that glorifies you throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Man. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Creator God, thank you for our world and the places where we live. Help us to be mindful that we are all created equal in your sight and accept our deep regret that despite this, there is still so much inequality to be found. Help us remember that you want us to be good stewards of your creation, living responsibly in the lands and seas of the earth. May all future growth be sustainable, and may we ensure that its abundance is fairly shared for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray this week for the persecuted Christians of Kuwait, we pray especially for those who have converted to Christianity from the Islamic faith. They face discrimination and harassment from family and community and even police monitoring. Give them courage and strength to live their daily lives. We give thanks for the Open Doors organisation who support the persecuted throughout the world May their work be supported and continue. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
On this special day for our Queen and country, we give thanks that you granted her prayer, that you would give her wisdom and strength to carry out her solemn promises, and that she would serve you and her nations and commonwealth all the days of her life. Let us pray for continued strength and wisdom for Her Majesty, giving thanks for a life of witness and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. In our intercessions today, we pray for those we have been asked to pray for, especially Elliot, Jeff, Maureen, Karen, Ian, Amelia, Jenny, Al, Jane, Judy, Sue, Liz and Bill. May they know your comfort and peace. Also we pray for those who have home communion, especially Synth, Diana, Grace and David. May it enable them to feel part, still feel part of our congregation. Merciful God, when death separates us from those we love and we find it hard to live without them, take from us all bitterness and resentment and help us to remember that death has no power at all over the peace you give and that the love we shared with our departed loved ones goes beyond the grave. We especially remember anybody known to us. And we pray for people with an anniversary of death this week. Especially Michael Quinn, Sheila McGreekley, Gordon Copson and Charles White. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Diocese of St. Alban, for our Bishops Alan, Michael and Richard, Reverend Anne and Diane, and for Reverend David, our Archdeacon, that you guide them as they lead us further into faith. We'll say the mission prayer together now. Heavenly Father, we thank, we thank you, you for the love and gifts you have poured upon us. Be among us today as we seek to serve you. Give us confidence and encouragement in all we do to share your love. May we walk always in the steps of Jesus. Help us to provide a warm welcome to all who long to know you. We pray that we may respond with a with desire, desire to, to share, share more of the love of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our accept prayer. these prayers for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand if you're able. God will speak peace to his peoples, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's exchange a sign of God's peace with a wave, a smile or whatever. Gonna sing out, but it'll be good, I'm sure.
Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, from sunrise to sunset, this day is holy. For Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that never fades. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of bread. And through the night we will um, overtake this day. You summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so, with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. you are holy indeed the source of all holiness grant that by the power of your holy spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ who in the same night that he was betrayed he took bread and he gave you thanks and he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. And he gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And so Father calling to mind his death on the cross. His perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. So that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit or kneel. As we pray together, as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread 
to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are many, we are, are one, one body, because, because we, we all share in one bread. We say together, Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sin, sin of the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. Amen.
bow our heads in prayer. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Saviour, the Prince of Peace, give us grace seriously to lay to heart the great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away our hatred and prejudice, whatever else may hinder us for godly union and concord. That as there is but one body, one spirit, and one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so, we, so may we henceforth be all of one heart and of one soul, united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and charity. And may we with one mind and one mouth glorify you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so it's notice is time. Okay. I hope everyone in church has got this week's notice sheet with all the additional things inside um, that are going on. If you are at home watching, then please check the Facebook posts because there are quite a few bits and pieces. And I better not stand here and tell every single thing. Um, so I think this morning we need to... Thank Archdeacon Dave for coming to be with us and lead us in the Holy Eucharist and to preaching. Thank you. Um, thanks also for everybody who contributed yesterday, either here or at St. Christopher's, to the food bank collections and to those who helped, because it was a bit windy, wasn't it? Or cold. <laughs> um, so that need is still very great, so that is greatly appreciated. Um, one thing I would say about services this week, with Reverend Dan, we're not live streaming as many of our prayer services as we normally do. So um, there will be no evening prayer he from here on Monday or morning prayer from St. Christopher's on Tuesday. But we pray together, we'll still be meeting here in St. Anne's Church at 12 o'clock on Tuesday. So everybody's welcome to that. This afternoon, the service at four o'clock at St. Christopher's, which will be evening prayer, a few songs, thinking a bit about wisdom, that will not be live streamed. So if you want to participate in that, you'll need to be there in person at four o'clock. And apart from that, the only other thing that I'm going to point out is that we have our annual meetings coming up on the 20th of March. And please, please prioritize that in your diary. Um, the meetings will take place here in St. Anne's Church on Sunday morning, the 20th of March. Um, and after the service and the meeting, we will have a shared lunch at which uh, we will be talking about what we're going to do at our celebrations for the Platinum Jubilee. We've got it penciled in the diary, but um, we're lacking in detail at the moment. So if you want to be part of that planning, um, come along to that shared lunch. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to especially point out. Does anyone know different? Good. <laughs> And once again, if you can pass on these flyers that are in your pack once you've jotted down the details, that would be really helpful. The big question then is, any birthdays today or this week? No. Oh, dear. <laughs> Not to worry. Not to worry. We're <laughs> it's a bit cold and windy for a birthday party anyway, so... And um, thank you. I think that is all of our notices. And so on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Diane. It's been lovely to join you in worship today. And thank you for your hospitality. It'd be lovely to lead the service, Diane, as well. And thank you to those operating the, the various technology as well. It is, it is much appreciated.
And also thank you to those who work so hard to keep the life, the mission and ministry of the two churches going. That is very much appreciated, whether you are formally a church warden or something like that, or whether you're just one of those people who gets things done behind the scenes. I know there's plenty of those as well. Please stand. <clears throat> a final blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.